Traditional surgery allows us to correct scoliosis and then we actually fuse the spine. But really with vertebral body tethering, we can correct the scoliosis while maintaining the child's growth, but then it also maintains the flexibility and the normal anatomy of a child's spine. So thoracoscopic surgery, which is really just putting the scope into the chest and working at the, with the spine, really for kids' spines is, is not a new surgery, but back in uh, the early 2000s, they approached thoracoscopic surgery and did fusions. Well, I had studied those early on as a resident, but I always felt that there was gonna be an opportunity to bring this back if we could ever come up with a non-fusion technology. So in 2013, I decided to move forward with that procedure, and at that time, there were really just two or three doctors in the country. So what you know, are the risks that we really didn't know about? And so early on, you're talking to a family and you're saying, well, this sounds good, but it just, and it makes sense, and it's intuitive that you would wanna keep the motion in your child's spine, uh, but at the same time, you're, you're learning the risks of an unknown procedure. You haven't really been down that path. And so it really took an organization kind of mapping it all out. And now that we're uh, seven, eight, nine, ten years down the road for many of my patients, uh, you know, it's a more um, educated conversation that we're having. It's all driven by passion. The pursuit is your drive to uh, innovate and to bring something new that will be game-changing and will actually improve the care of the patients that you're taking care of. And for me, if you can maintain their flexibility and increase their return to activities and preserve their anatomy of their spine, I feel like you've then pushed the, the care uh, in the innovation and the surgeries in the right direction and it's so different from what was fusion surgery which to me was to go in there correct the scoliosis for sure but really you're just changing the anatomy you're changing the flexibility of that child's spine forever and I think our first publication it's now been cited almost 70 or 80 times so that contribution and realizing you know you're one of the first to, to write about this procedure but it's really uh, you know as we study it I, I look at it almost as a responsibility uh, to make sure that we are getting better better at selecting the right patients better at the procedure itself as we continue to study VBT and realize that the preservation of motion is there and the preservation of anatomy is there and the return to activity level is 95% or better, you know, there's a lot of positive things that are pointing in the direction of non-fusion technology. Did I know that in 2013 it would be where it is today? I had no idea. Um, because procedures come and go and there's so many things in medicine and so but I really believe that uh, VBT is here to stay because I see so many positive things that are coming from it and we're just still kind of refining the care for kids.